So lateral hip pain, that really irritable sensation on the outside of our leg. What are some of the key causes of this condition? Let's check out some 3D anatomy so we can work out what does cause it, but also how we treat it. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. Let's dive in to our 3D anatomy model. So let's dive in here and then we'll zoom in so I can show you a couple of really important structures in this whole condition. So the first is the greater trochanter itself. Now this is a very specific landmark, a bony landmark on the femur. And if we look at it from the lateral side, you can see it clearly sticks out in relation to the center of the hip. And it's really important because this is where all the major muscles that are involved in external and internal rotation of the hip attach to. Then let's look at our first muscle, which is the gluteus medius muscle. Now we can see here that it originates on the iliac crest and it inserts into the greater trochanter as we looked at a second ago. Now, the next muscle that we need to look at is the gluteus minimus tendon. Now, this attaches a little bit more to the ilium bone itself rather than the iliac crest, but we can clearly see that it also attaches to that very same bony structure, the greater trochanter. Then the other key structure we want to look at is the iliotibial band. Now this is a soft tissue fascia structure that as we can see runs right over those two tendons and then the greater trochanter as well. So it runs over the greater trochanter right over those two tendons before it runs down the lateral thigh towards the knee. So now that we've looked at those structures what actually causes lateral hip pain? Well, we used to think that it was due to inflammation of a particular bursa, which would have been the greater trochanteric bursa, which would have sat right around here, basically where those two key tendons, the gluteus medius and gluteus minimus tendons, would insert into. However, they did a load of studies, particularly there was Bird et al. from 2001 and Connell et al. from 2003, where they had a look specifically at MRI scans and even completed surgery on patients where they thought that the bursa was the problem. In fact, many surgeons would remove that bursa completely in order to try and stop the pain. However, it was found that actually the bursa itself was only inflamed in between eight to 15% of cases, as demonstrated by those two papers I mentioned a second ago. So instead of the actual bursa itself, we found that it was the compression of those two key tendons from the iliotibial band running over the top of the greater trochanter that would cause a gluteal tendinopathy, a tendinopathy of those two key tendons because of that compression force from the iliotibial band. So how does that actual compression occur in day-to-day -day life? Well, it's all to do with increased hip adduction. This is the movement where the femur or the thigh bone moves across towards the center of the body, adduction. And the idea is that when it does that, that iliotibial band runs over the top of the greater trochanter, over those tendons, and therefore compresses the tendons against the bone itself, which is what leads to a gluteal tendinopathy. So when does this happen? During the day, it can happen in static and dynamic postures. Static postures, how we sit, how we stand. You'll commonly see people sitting with their legs crossed or one folded over the top of the other, where you can see that the thigh bone moves in relative to the hip joint. And it can also happen in dynamic postures, how we stand up, how we run. We'll find that the hip can sometimes be in an adducted position where the knee is more central in its position relative to the hip joint and again that can lead to the compression which irritates those tendons. So why is this important? Well it's fundamental to how we actually treat a gluteal tendinopathy. There are two key components here. The first one is education. 
Now the idea is that if we can try and explain to our patients how that compression occurs through that hip adduction position, it can help them to perhaps look out and recognize when during the day do they find themselves in that particular posture and can they try and remember to move out of that posture or to work in more of a central posture in relation to the hip in order to reduce the frequency of compression. Now, we don't want to make it so hard for them that they are constantly looking at their hip and thinking, right, where is my hip in space? Is it in that adducted position? That only creates fear and anxiety. But the patient understanding that trying to reduce it generally compared to the frequency of hip adduction before will make a difference over the long term. And the second component is in relation to the exercises that we give. So in the past, you'd often see people being prescribed ITB stretches in order to try and help this condition. But you can see from the pictures on the screen, this clearly adducts the hip, the whole thing that we're trying to reduce when it comes to a gluteal tendinopathy. The other key thing is that the ITB is not a muscle. It's a really thick, heavy fascia, and it's actually really difficult to stretch. So instead, I find myself trying to give my patients exercises where we're trying to strengthen the gluteal muscles, give those tendons more ability to load and work with the different positions it finds itself in. And in the early stages, the key thing is to try and find exercises where the hip is not in an adducted position, but instead is in a neutral or even an abducted position to try and reduce that compression and thus the irritability on those tendons. So what exercises might those be? Well, first of all, we can start with some bridging, as you can see here, where the hip is in a neutral position, not an adducted position. And we can even encourage this further by placing something like a TheraBand around the distal lateral thighs to give the patient something to push out against, so they are definitely moving into hip abduction instead of adduction. With this, go slow, low intensity, slow contraction, so that we get those deeper hip muscles working. Slow contraction, slowly up, slowly down, eight to 10 repetitions, two to three times a day. We can then do exactly the same with something like a squat. Make sure the knees are not moving too far in so we can keep that neutral hip alignment. Use a TheraBand around the distal thighs if you wanna make sure of this. Slowly up, slowly down, eight to 10 reps, two to three times a day. So I really hope this video has helped. If it has, please support us by smashing that like button. Subscribe to our channel for all our best updates. Check us out on social media, at Clinical Physio on Instagram, and make sure you look at our website, clinicalphysio.com. I'm Khalid, thanks for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.